Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Can we really call this an unboxing episode? I'm not sure because I don't have boxes. Well, except for one. But this is a haul that I purchased from a custom shop employee at Gibson. Yes, it was the same guy that had helped me get back some of those stolen guitars uh, almost a year ago now. A year to nine months or so. And Gibson used to do these employee sales where they would sell their employees some really cool like prototypes as well as like overstock instruments. I mean, we've talked about this before, but, but these two guitars that he sold me today are absolutely fantastic. Like I didn't even know a prototype of this would exist. So let's just go ahead and open this thing up because I've always wanted to, you know, check one of these things out. However, they were just so ridiculously expensive when they were first introduced. This is a true historic prototype. So I believe it was uh, 2017 when these things came out. And essentially the whole shtick behind these is all the historics that we've ever made up until this point have been inferior. This is the true historic. Like this is what it's meant to be. The closest thing that Gibson has ever made to a 59. But at the same time, you know, they also say that about every year's new iteration. But the true historics really did not last that long, only like a year or two. So having a prototype in your collection, that's kind of cool. But you might be asking yourself, huh, well, what makes this a prototype? Is there anything particularly special about these? Well, for that, let's take a look at the backside of the headstock. This is the true historic 1959 reissue prototype number one. So the story behind these guitars are they made four initial prototypes when they were trying to figure out what exactly they were going to do with the True Historic series. And what they were trying to figure out was what type of top carve do they want? Because they've done a whole bunch of like collector choice runs and they profile those vintage bursts and they all have different top carves to them. Some have like really deep dish carves. Some are a little bit more subtle. This one is not the most pronounced in the world, but they made two prototypes in the Billy Gibbons carve style and then two in the Carmelita style, which I believe that's a Joe Bonamassa guitar. This is a Gibbons top carve. And if you know anything about the true historics, they went with the Carmelita. So that's what makes this particular one different from every single other true historic that you'll find is the top carve style. And these are factory relic guitars. And I gotta say, you know, for a relic guitar, they didn't do too half bad on this. Like you got the edge wear on the headstock on this one. You've got it on the back. It's pretty evenly worn, but at the same time, it looks fairly realistic. Like I'm not the biggest fan of aging jobs. This is one of the more convincing relic jobs I've seen. But there it is, True Historic 2017 Gibson Custom Shop. You even get a little bit of nice uh, dancing figuring back here. So when he showed me this one, it's like, yes, that is a nice little piece of Gibson history. I am definitely interested in buying that off of you. But if you think this is a beauty and was aged nicely, wait until you see the second prototype I have to show you guys. I'm gonna tease you with that one and save it till the end because there's some other cool stuff that we need to talk about today. But not only was the guitar itself aged, but you also have the aging on the Lifton case. If you wanna buy an aged Lifton from Gibson, I think they charge you like 800 bucks or something crazy. But we'll just go ahead and show you the details on this. I think they did a pretty good job with the aging of this. I don't know why you would want an aged case. I mean, maybe just to uh, match the guitar. I mean, the handle looks a little bit cheesy, not necessarily worn correctly, but, but this, I mean, if I didn't tell you that this wasn't factory relic age, you'd probably just go, okay, yeah, it's a rusty latch. And they've got some like a wear areas along here. It's, they're just kind of interesting cases if you like something that matches your aged guitar. Because not everybody plays guitar enough to make it look aged and relic, and they want something that looks like that on their thing. This isn't really a, is relicking cool or not type thing. It's just, it's on the guitar, so naturally we get to talk about it. Well, what a cool example here. It even comes with the paperwork that tells you it's the True Historic 59 Gibbons. And of course, the COA. Prototype number one. Now, if you think I'm a little bit lackluster about this whole guitar, it's because that other one is like 10 times cooler than this one, in my opinion. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of this one to see that guitar. But let's go ahead and talk about these other items. So these are actually empty cases, but they're fancy limited edition cases. 
that went with like super special guitars that you don't see all the time. And the reason why these things exist, it's not because the guitars got damaged or they shipped out with the wrong case or anything. Sometimes when Gibson will buy these from TKL or whatever, they say, okay, uh, you have to order these in like 50s, like 50, 100, 200. I'm not 100% sure on all the lingo. Other times they just order extras and they store them in the warehouse for a while, just in case something happens and shipping, they need to replace a case for someone. So there's always a, at least a couple of extra cases floating around out there. But these guys are from 2007. But take a look at this thing. It is a tweed Gibson Custom Shop case. It has these like super heavy duty latches on it. Like that's what you see on like Taylor acoustic hard shell cases. Kind of an interesting handle that's secured by these little metal rings. But then once we get to the inside, check this out. This is the first time I'm seeing this. It's really comfortable. It feels just like the regular custom shop material, but yet it's this yellow color. So it kind of matches with this. So if you're familiar with Gibson history, this belongs to the 50th anniversary of the 1957 Les Paul Custom. And what they did for that run is they did the custom in all gold. And then for the headstock, they did that in gold too. So instead of like a holly veneer with a regular Gibson logo, it's literally just a gold plaque plastered on the top of the headstock. Sounds pretty cool, but honestly, collectors, they're not too in love with those guitars as far as like pricing goes. People ask the moon all the time, but they generally don't sell for, you know, much more than like a 5,000-ish. But this was one of the extra cases for those guys. And you know, it's kind of a cool case. I'm not really sure what would look good in this particular case. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that would. I think even a black Les Paul Custom would look pretty nice. Let's check that out. Oh man, yeah. That does look pretty good. It matches the binding. I don't know, something about this case seems like extra plush. And that's a really good fit for a Custom. We've got this Tweed one. You can check it out on my Reverb shop. But I think he said he bought these at the employee auction in like uh, 2019 or something. So it's crazy how something like this from 2007 can sit around for 12 years before Gibson starts, you know, taking stuff out. But that's the difference between uh, the old era of Gibson and the new one. Now that they've got that reverb shop, I'm not even sure if they'll do employee sales like this anymore. It seems like they're just starting to uh, sell that stuff off on their own. So I don't know if they'll ever extend that to cases or whatnot. But this one is actually a sample or prototype case. But if I'm being honest about this particular one, I'm not all that excited about it. The only thing that makes this different from every single other one that was ever made is this. It says Gibson Custom on it because the version of this case never had any branding on the outside. So what guitar is that? Well, quite simply, it's the 1968 Les Paul reissues. So this one will be different from other Gibson Custom Shop cases that look like this because they normally have that burgundy interior because we have the crushed gold looking. Yeah, that would look great with a black Les Paul Custom. You could also find these on like the 68 gold tops. We've done reviews on those. So honestly, I won't charge too much of a premium for this one because yeah, it's it's just a Gibson Custom logo on the outside, but a nice case anyways. You don't find these things for sale separately and yellow really pops certain colors. Guess I gotta whip out my black Les Paul Custom again here to see how that thing looks. Yeah, that's nice. Very tight fit. Not quite as good as that other one though. I mean, however, do you want to put your Adam Jones silver burst in a bright yellow case? It doesn't look quite as bad as I thought it would. It really brings out that yellowish hue of the guitar, but yeah, probably wouldn't be my first choice. But other than that, this thing's kind of slightly stylized after the Lipton cases because it has the Gibson custom emblem there. And out of this particular run, there were only 157 of those guitars made. So, you know, finding one of those things separate, you won't see that every day. Now this one, it's supposed to be a one of a kind, but again, it's not really all that special. But this Lifton is crazily rare. Like when he said he had this thing, I didn't really fully understand it because it was a little bit before my time when I actually paid attention to new guitars. But even as a guy who didn't really pay attention to new guitars back in 2014, even this one caught my attention. So this looks like just any regular Lifton case, right? We got 
just lifting stuff here. But then flip over to this camera angle. Oh yes, we've got something special here. Now these aren't just random Joe Schmo stickers that we've put on here. These things are actually pretty cool. This is the case that they used for the aged and signed Southern Rock Tribute guitars, and they only made 50 of these. On the back of those guitars, you'd see all these great people who have signed that. However, the reason why this run is most famous is because they put a bursted heart on the front of the guitar, which I think looks dreadfully awful, but at the same time, it's... It's you kind of learn to love it. I mean, it was done in 2014. It's had six years to age. I still think it's a little bit too goofy for my own personal taste, but it's goofy in kind of a good way. But do you really want to spend $10,000 for that guitar? I don't know. But here we can see the Allman Brothers, Alpine Valley Music Theater, All Access Pass to Armadillo, Whisper Concerts. These were just basically made to look just like a case that would be used be taken to all these concerts. But other than the special stickers on the front, and these aren't just like cheap stickers, they, they actually feel like cloth. That's cool. But I'm surprised to see that the uh, rest of the case had not been aged when the guitar that this would have came with would be aged. But everything else besides the stickers, it's just standard stuff here. But kind of cool to see all the bands referenced on this thing. Now we've got two more things to talk about. One in a sealed box, but I lied, I'll do the guitar second to last because this, this is like a true keeper guitar. If you thought the Cherry Sunburst was nice, I don't know, maybe you won't like this one. But I've never personally been a huge fan of Cherry Sunbursts and I've been more of like a dirty lemon type of guy or something that just doesn't quite have as much bright red within it. So inside this case, let's find out. Man, it just takes your breath away every time you open this thing. The top on this one, the other one has like a little bit of chevron flame going on, but this one, I mean, it just, this is the kind of top I like. It's a really heavy flame on this side. Not quite as extreme on this one, it's a little bit more subtle, but some of the angles that you get with this thing, I mean, it's a super active top. Check it out this way, and it's that age dirty lemon. So this one is prototype number two with the Gibbons top carve. Because the way I understand it is the other two, they weren't actually labeled as prototypes, they just went into production. Now we could be wrong on that because I don't have like official records or anything. But as far as I'm aware, these are the only two that were done with the Billy Gibbons top carve. But we'll just get some nice close-up shots here of this flame top. I mean, this is the real money guitar, in my opinion. It's also been aged just like that other one. You can see like a ding right there. And this one is the one that whenever somebody would come over to his house, they would choose this one to play it. So it's got a little bit of extra wear that didn't come from the factory, but good luck ever being able to tell the difference between it all, that's for sure. And these all have really nice, big, chunky necks on them. I don't think I'll necessarily do separate reviews and demos, but I will let Michael Weber do some demos here at the end of this episode if you're interested in checking out how these things sound. You can also find them on my Reverb shop. These would make fantastic Christmas presents if you are a big diehard fan of reissue guitars. And of course, this one has all the same paperwork as that first one. True Historic 1959 Prototype 2. And last but not least here, let's check this thing out. This is a factory sealed, never been opened, coolest piece of case candy ever. So I really don't remember what guitar got this because this guy has had so many signature guitars. But just wait until you see this cool thing. It's the coolest piece of case candy ever, outside of Slash's hat. You get the genuine leather Slash jacket. And what makes it even better is it actually fits me. It's a large. How cool is that? Never been worn. It looks like they're made by Beardmore Company. Corporate Collections Logos Inc. Yeah, Logos is the same people that make those medallions on the back. But here you can see it's got the slash tag. It must have been with whatever particular reissue that one was. But other than the slash tag, I don't believe it's branded slash or anything anywhere. Okay, yes it is. You got it right in there. The little slash scully and Gibson custom. 
this is a cool jacket. Like it feels like it would keep you warm in the winter. That's for sure. I've always wanted to see one of these things in person, but people always ask like a thousand bucks for them. I'd have to say this one looks a little bit cooler than the vintage Gibson Les Paul jean jacket I have from Gibson USA. But at the same time, this thing actually has a Les Paul on the back. It says Gibson looks halfway decent. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed, you know, going over my little purchase here of a whole bunch of stuff. We've got some empty cases if you're interested in some kind of more unique, rarer versions of the regular types of cases. I guess if you really want to steal my jacket from me, because if we're honest, I'm not sure if I'm cool enough to pull it off. <laughs> Slash has big shoes to fill, and you certainly cannot play guitars with this jacket on. Not until you break it in a little bit anyways. All right, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>